Hey everyone, Sheldon here, and welcome to part 4 of how to make your hardened paper kunai. So in this video we're going to stack up some 16 layer pieces to form the circular shape toward the bottom of the handle, and then we're also going to polish everything and begin the painting process. So the circle is going to be made out of 16 layer pieces. I have a 16 layer piece right here, and it is the same shape as those 16 layer pieces we made at the beginning to form the actual kunai blade shape itself. Now this is still semi-wet, which means it's pretty easy to cut through still, but since it's only 16 layers, you can wait for it to completely dry and you'll still be able to cut through it pretty easily. So the 16 layer pieces are going to look just like this. As you can see, this is 16 layers. So you're going to need about 7 or 8 16 layer pieces like this in order to reach your desired thickness of 0.500 inches, which is half of an inch, or 12.7 millimeters. So the outer diameter of this circle is going to be 1.500 inches, which is an inch and a half, or 38.1 millimeters. The inner diameter is going to be exactly one inch, or 25.4 millimeters. Now you can either glue the circle templates on here, or you can just draw it out with a compass. I just drew them on there really quick, so now I'm going to cut them out. As you're cutting these circles out, make sure you apply some super glue around all of the seams and then take some pliers and compress the layers together. So these three circles are actually going to form the middle of the loop. I'm sure you remember from the beginning when we drilled the hole in the blade section of the kunai, we cut a groove first. So basically we're going to stack these circles up like this and cut a groove that goes through all three of them. So I'm going to glue these together with some super glue off camera. So I glued all three of those 16 layer circles together and I darkened the pencil lines as you can see because you can't find the center anymore because it's cut out. We want to make sure the groove is lined up with the center or else the entire circle will be a little bit off and it's just going to look kind of weird. So I drew two lines as you can see and they are parallel to this center line right here. Just make sure the width between these two outer lines is a little bit smaller than the diameter of a quarter inch drill, or a 6.35 millimeter drill, because the size of this drill is the same diameter as this little smaller diameter right there. So now you can cut this entire section out. You just go from this line right here to this line right here, cut all the way through all three 16 layer pieces. After it's cut out, it should kind of look like the letter C. Also, keep in mind, when you're working with hardened paper, you should always use pliers and reinforce the edges with some super glue and compress everything together, just to make sure everything stays strong. So I have five other 16 layer circles here, as you can see, and I'm going to take two of these and glue one to this side and another one to this side. So that little groove right there will be centered. So now those circles are glued to the outside, as you can see, so the groove is centered. So we just need to keep that centered. So we have three circles left. We can put one on this side, and then we can put one on the other side, and then we can split this circle in half and put both halves on each side. So really quick, I'm going to glue these two circles to the outside on both sides. And now I'm just splitting this one in half, as you can see. Now they're split apart, so I'm just going to glue one here and one here. And make sure you are always compressing the layers together and applying super glue. After all of the layers are compressed together, you can take your drill and start twisting it inside this groove. You don't really need a power drill because it's not that far to drill. So as you can see, the hole is drilled all the way through now, and I recommend putting a little bit of super glue on the inside of the hole and drill through it again after the super glue dries. And as you can see, the circle fits over the smaller section of the handle right here, just like that. And as long as everything is lined up, it should look correct. 
So now we just need the little band of paper toward the top right there, and then we need to smooth the entire thing out. So to add the band of paper, I'm just going to take this strip here. It's a quarter of an inch wide or 6.35 millimeters. Now you can wrap the paper around there until you reach whatever diameter you want. In my case, I'm going to make it 600 thousandths of an inch in diameter or 15.2 millimeters in diameter. So I took the handle off temporarily and this circle still comes off as you can see, but we're going to fix that later. So I'm just going to start wrapping this paper around the top area of this handle right here until I reach my desired diameter. So that strip of paper was originally 11 inches long and I cut it in half. So I only put one half of it on there right now and this is the other half. And as you can see, it's not the right thickness quite yet, so it just needs a little bit more. I finished wrapping that strip around, and as you can see, it's still not quite the right diameter, so I'm just going to add a couple more strips and see where that gets me. Alright, so now it's the right diameter, as you can see, and it only took three strips that were 5.5 inches long, or 139.7 millimeters. I think it looks a lot more clean and finished off this way, so now we can just put this back on here. So now we can start filling up all of the low areas with some super glue and baking soda. To do this I recommend taking everything apart again, it will be a lot easier if everything is separated. That's why I didn't glue the circle on yet because it would be a little bit harder to sand everything down when it's attached because this whole thing would have to move. So everything is separated now and we can start filling up all of the low spots. So you can see I have this bright light source right here and this is how I'm going to be able to see all of the low spots. You can see a few low spots on here, you can see some down here toward the bottom, you can see a few up here, and all we need to do is fill those up with some super glue and baking soda. So I just put some super glue there, as you can see, now you just sprinkle some baking soda over it. Just like that. You can see it solidifies pretty much instantly, so now I'm just going to do that to all of the low areas. You can see I have a few more areas filled up and all you need to do is take something like a needle file or just a flat file, even some sandpaper and start going over these areas until it matches the rest of the surface. Alright, so I finished filing everything down and now I'm just going to coat the entire surface with some super glue. To do that you just take some super glue and put it over the surface like this and spread it around with something like a piece of paper or whatever. After you coat the entire surface with super glue you're probably going to want to wait until it dries and then after it dries you can take some low grit sandpaper which is pretty rough and then start sanding down the surface. And then you take a higher grit sandpaper and do the same thing. And then you take an even higher grit sandpaper, and this is 400 grit sandpaper, and you do the same thing. After that you can use a paper towel to clean off all the extra baking soda, and this will also polish the surface. And if you want to take it one step further, you can use a polish wheel like this. And I actually have a polishing paper video, it will be linked in the description below, so if you want more information on that, be sure to check that out. As you can see it has a bit of a shine to it now, and I think it looks a lot better when it's polished like this. And for the handle, we pretty much do the same thing, just start off with a low grit sandpaper and work your way up. So I'm using some low grit sandpaper just to get rid of the main high spots. And then a slightly higher grit sandpaper to smooth that out a little bit. And then the highest grit you have, which should make the surface much more smooth. And then you apply some super glue to the surface and spread it around evenly. Once the super glue dries, just take the highest grit sandpaper you have and go over the surface again. And then take a paper towel and clean off all of the excess paper, powder, and baking soda and all that stuff and this will polish the surface a little bit too. 
And that's pretty much it for the handle. You just need to sand it until it's smooth. As for the low spots, I'm just filling them all up with some super glue and baking soda. And all you need to do is file those down with a file. So you just take a needle file and start going over the surface just like this. After you get the inside nice and smooth, I recommend doing the same thing to the outside. And then I recommend using some sandpaper like this to even out the outer circumference of the circle. And you just turn it while you're sanding like this. And it should even it out pretty nicely. And that's all I'd worry about as of now. We're going to round this off a little bit later anyway. So like I said, we're going to round that off a little bit later, but we can actually start painting these two components, the blade and the handle. I'm going to do that because it will speed up the entire process, meaning these two components will be completely dry by the time I'm done rounding this piece off. Now I know this seems kind of counterintuitive, but we're actually going to clean off the entire surface with some rubbing alcohol. The only reason we're able to do this is because this entire kunai is covered in super glue, which means it's pretty much waterproof. So I'm just going to put some of this on a paper towel like this and start cleaning off the surface. And then of course the handle. Now you just need to take some painter's tape like this and we're going to cover this part right here and this part right here. And we're adding tape to this because we don't want any paint to get on those areas. If paint gets on this part right here, it's going to be really hard to put it inside this section of the kunai. I never wanted to glue the handle inside the blade section of the kunai. I wanted to put some sort of pin eventually that would hold it there instead. But even without a pin, it seems to stay in the right place only with friction. All right, so let's add the tape. So now I have the tape on the handle, and now I'm just going to take this rod right here and put it inside just far enough, and then I'm going to put some tape going from here all the way out. All right, so all the paint is on there, so let's go outside and paint it. Okay, so I really wanted to film this part during the day, but you know, the show must go on. So, got some primer here, just gray primer, and I'm going to go over the entire surface here. I'm going to give that some time to dry and then I'm going to flip it over and add some primer to the other side. It's like late right now and people are starting to come out of their houses and they're wondering what I'm doing because I have like this fluorescent light bulb plugged in up there and it's like really bright but you know, I gotta paint this. So now I'm going to flip it over and add some more to the other side. I'm doing super short passes with the primer or else it will pool up if I don't do that. Okay, now I'm going to start adding some flat black spray paint. So the primer has had about 15 minutes to dry. I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, so I moved indoors because the storm started to get really bad. The wind started pushing and like moving all the newspapers and stuff. And then the thunder was really loud and here I am. But the show must go on. I will paint this. So I'm just gonna add a second coat right now. I'm going to start adding some primer to the handle now, so. I guess I could hang it from a string and do it like that, but I'm just gonna do it like this because I don't have a string. Okay, there's the primer, and now I'm going to start adding the paint. Ha! Perfect. 
So now I'm just waiting for all this stuff to dry. I did a second coat on the handle and this one is still drying here. So in case you're wondering, yes, I do have a window open. That's why you can hear those chimes and stuff. And they're kind of annoying because they're loud. This is definitely taking a long time, but it will be worth it. I think it looks pretty good so far. And doing this isn't nearly as time consuming as like polishing paper. I'm glad that part's over with. So these two components have had some time to dry and now I'm just taking the tape off as you can see. All right, so I took all of the tape off as you can see and everything has a nice smooth finish on it. So now we can just put these components back together. Now we just need to round this circle piece off a little bit more so it doesn't have these sharp edges here. And after we do that, we can paint it and put it on the end of this. And it should look a lot more finished off that way.